What's going on? Movie Mouse here back in City Skylines, the town of Rosewood, season 10, episode number two. And uh, since the last episode, I did two things. I built this one little stretch of road, and that was able to get us to our 850 milestone uh, population count. And then over here, I kind of messed this up in the last episode, and this was a little curvy. Uh, and I figured out, I kind of knew what I did right, right away. So I built this. And then built this grid off of where this road connected from. And that wasn't quite the right proportions or distance away. Uh, so I basically redid what I did over here in reverse. Connecting from the highway first. Building that. And then getting this connected. And that made it a little bit more symmetrical. A little less lopsided. And as a result, doesn't force this road to curve. So uh, that and, and again, I built one street off the middle of kind of our residential area there to uh to move a couple more people in so i think let's uh let's do this let's let it play and let's connect this down one more block before we think about today how to kind of fold this into other parts of the city so you can have these little kind of micro grids that's totally fine but you know what happens when we get to the trees over here well i don't think you know we need to go into the woods but we certainly could come back with another street over here something like that As we kind of branch off to the left here, this is where we want to start thinking about, you know, how do we fold other neighborhoods in? So I think we're going to buy this one first. Let me reorient. So it's kind of how we've been looking at uh, to the north. I think we're going to go to the west here. Now, in terms of what we can buy off of here, can we look at... Yeah. So no shipping if we do a straight nine square. If we were to go up this way, I think. That doesn't have shipping either? Where is shipping on this map? All right, well, shipping is somewhere on this map. I would assume it's over here somewhere, but it doesn't look like I can buy any tiles that have shipping connections, so I'm kind of confused there because this isn't right. Where is shipping on this map? You can't buy any tiles further than that. I don't know that that's correct if they say they're shipping on this map. What am I missing? Let me know in the comments. Let's buy this one to the west. Because we're going to do that anyway. So we're going to probably buy the 3x3 three three square around the original starting tile. And why I wanted to expand this way first is because we've got some, some farmland happening over here. And we want to think about, you know, how do we want to bring this in? How do we want to piggyback off this already existing network? So we've got, what, 17,000 in the bank. Do we have another loan now? We do. So just so we can start to frame things out, uh, how's our budget? We're making money with it, so let's let it play on three times speed. Because we need it. So four lane road, let's take that out as far as this block. And then let's start to think about where we want to kind of hook it in. We kind of want a road running through the farm and then we want maybe a highway exit somewhere over here so how do we kind of hook all that in let's do this let's let's come perpendicular from the highway just so we can kind of frame based on that and let's go into the farming area right kind of in the smack in the middle of it and then just so Nobody's making a 90 degree corner off the highway. That way it's just it's kind of lined up with that section of the highway, which is relatively straight through there. And then let's just frame a road kind of through the middle of the area. I'm gonna have kind of like a, a triangle intersection somewhere in the middle there. I always snap to the five or the tens to keep the nodes uh, a little bit spaced apart. This is where AI calculates lane changes. So not that it matters on a two lane road right now, but it can certainly kind of throw stuff off. So 
now that we've got that in mind, just that little bit of a frame, let's freeform, uh, freeform even, and we'll come out about halfway before we hook into that. Uh, everybody's complaining about power. We're going to need a lot of these as we go. How close can we get that in there and still have 8 megawatts of power? So that will cover us for about 5 minutes. Then we'll need to drop in another one. Can't wait for the solar updraft tower. Where is that one? It's always a good jump. We get that at 7,500. That's part of the Green Cities DLC also. That's a great uh, station though. They're complaining about power up here, which means that they're using all of the electricity. We could uh, make sure these share power on the same grid, so hopefully we won't have to add another one immediately because the industry uh, is using it all. Uh, let's pause real quick. So we unlocked two things at the last milestone, and you'll notice over here is a little pop-up saying that there's crime because we don't have any police stations. That also means that we don't have any fire stations because we unlocked those at the same time. And I should know better, so let's go ahead and plop one down right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle, I guess. Can we get a police station on the same block? That's awesome. So there we go. We have health, fire, police, all on the same block right there. That little middle city service block. The problem is they're going to have to go down to come back around, but that's okay. It's going to be problematic for fires that happen over here. But they can they can figure that out. We could do a little turnaround somewhere that hopefully only they would use, but chances are everybody will turn into it. It'll just make a really busy intersection. So over this way, we could have a little bit of grid work and have some uh, farms. Do we have... The ability to do industries yet we don't when do we unlock that what is it population 1300 because we get that really soon all right so let's let's just round out this neighborhood then we'll get landscaping soon enough and then we can start to do pedestrian paths through here we're saving space for that through all these neighborhoods do that so lots and lots of residential demand we've got a good chunk of commercial demand as well so we may as well continue on with our our main street let's go until the zone starts to break and, and by that I mean where the road starts to curve you see that the zones start to get separated a little bit so let's do that and then we'll have maybe a little bit of a buffer zone room for something some parks some separation between this neighborhood and the next kind of area of neighborhoods let's see how are we doing here we're doing every what is that that's 30 30 so every 60 or so right let's double check that in here yeah that's 30 and that's another 30 okay so if we do that if we come out at kind of an angle Right about there. There's our there's our next milestone. So let's come out here. 12 units and then connect that. There we go. So see, we can start to kind of fold things in together. Still maintain a little bit of uh, a little bit of area for pedestrian paths, not the best. But you know, you can still have grids and not necessarily have to have this endless uh, this endless look you can have things start to kind of bend and fold into one another and we'll do this a little bit and keep things tucked in by the trees and then we'll build you know more more off of this this angle now we obviously didn't connect things correctly or at all so we'll bring this all the way down here because we'll need it soon enough as we continue to move people in so we'll make sure we're covering uh, as best we can down the street That should give everybody water. It's 
a little funky, but it works. I want to, I want to kind of use these trees as a natural barrier and we can even fill them in a little bit more, but you know, let's, let's not build where there's forest. There's plenty of room here for us to expand plenty of power problems. This is going to be a continuing, uh, a continuing thing that we'll have to drop in a lot of these until we at least get the advanced wind turbine at 2,400. And then what was it? 7,500 for our next big jump. So we're gonna have a lot of a lot of spinny stuff on the map until we get to some of those uh, those larger options for power. Uh, tons of industrial demand. Let's get a little bit more of our residents filled out here, and I think we can break out the fill tool because of the way that these break. Maybe we tuck, I'm not gonna zone on this row because maybe we tuck a couple commercial buildings in there. So let's zone over here for now. That's all good. And we're leaving this top block as, as buffer. We're gonna fill down with trees, the occasional city service building like a school or additional firehouse. Um, I, you know what I was actually just thinking as I said the word firehouse is I wonder how well coverage is gonna work up here because they have to leave the station turn somewhere down into the neighborhoods to come up here to come around so that's going to be super super problematic so fire station number two throw them up there for now because we're going to have problems in the industrial area looks like they got there in time huh that's good they should be able to get here a little bit faster this way they're on the roll um so I wanted to talk a little bit about just city planning in general, right? And there's a couple basic theories that I go by. It doesn't mean that they're right. It just means what I'm most comfortable with. I tend to put commercial on the main strips. People are going to be traveling these roads. These are noisy zones. So wherever you have a lot of traffic, have the noisy zones. Um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to, the, to kind of bury them in behind residents because then for them to get deliveries trucks have to come there trucks have to drive through your residential areas and that's no fun for anybody so if these the commercial zones and industrial have more direct access to the highway all that truck traffic going to and from those businesses isn't going through other intersections residential neighborhoods things like that so you can see by having this kind of off almost on its own exit right now technically it is um we're running into a lot less traffic problems than we would be if we had it all kind of on the same exit. Where is info views? 95%. That's pretty good. Where things are slowing down is right there, but that's kind of to be expected. Uh, power. <laughs> Again. Constant battle. There's going to be a lot of these. We want... There was... See, there's a little spot right here where you're getting one less megawatt. And over here, you're getting eight. So squeeze everything you can out of uh, out of the wind turbines. You're going to need it. So yeah, if we kind of look from above, yes, it's a grid. But we're starting to, to fold that grid into other parts, right? Into other areas of the city. And we're really sticking with low density on this one. Sorry, I, I started to explain, I think, my, my zoning approach. Uh, and I got distracted. Squirrel moment. Happens a lot. If you're new here, get used to it. But uh, if we jump back into zoning, right? You know, all, all this noise is happening as a result of commercial businesses. If I jump back into the headphones here, you can see the noisiest parts of our town are our windmills, our industrial, our highway, and our commercial zone. Now, we do have landscaping, but I don't have a ton of money in the bank. But let's do this. Let's pause it for a second. Let's see what kind of trees we have on the map here. So alders. Which one's this oak? Looks like we got some oaks. Definitely some alders. Where's that's that one, right? Yep. Oaks, alders. Maybe the tree with leaves. 
I really like the conifers, so you're going to see plenty of those kind of get uh, tucked in here at points. So I'm just going to kind of spam some of these around so they don't look too organized, hopefully. And then we'll fill in some of the gaps with another brush. And then why don't we do at least one more. We'll get some a couple wild conifers in. Really nice space filling trees. And then why don't we get a couple more of the slightly smaller conifers tucked in here. And then maybe we'll come and try and spam with a brush and see what we can fill in tree with leaves too. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of trees popping in there. This is a little bit easier on uh, on PC, which I'll be getting to it at some point, um, not too far into the series. I'm going to do a, a, a similar build on PC that will kind of line up. So the conifers are different. The conifers, right, are, are not part of our normal, I don't think. Oh, they are. Over here they are. They weren't part of this kind of pocket of trees over here, but it's totally okay to have, you know, whatever you, whatever you think looks right in the space. Um, so let's see. Let's see if that made any difference. I think it'll make a little bit of a difference, but if we play on three times speed and watch that, that bubble, it gets a little bit less red on this side um, because some of that sound gets absorbed by the trees. So... We can try and fill that in some more and get this spread of red off of this side of the street. But so far, so good. It's not so bad that people are complaining. Um, just something to keep an eye on. Especially if we have high density there, the, the bubble gets even larger and redder, kind of like this. You know, this is really noisy stuff people don't want to live next to. But that's just kind of zone placement, right? Keep industrial where you can on its own exit. Entirely separate exit if you can. Um, the downside to that is people go there to work, so maybe give them a, a heavy traffic band road. Does this line up, actually? This would be awesome if this lines up. I... It's really close. So we could do that, but I don't think... We don't have heavy traffic band yet, do we? Policies? Population of 5,000. So at 5,000, we'll connect a road through here. We'll say no heavy trucks. And that should only allow you know, uh, motor vehicles and city service vehicles to travel up and down through there. And uh, the traffic will still use, the truck traffic will still use this highway loop we've created. Now, we're not utilizing this at all. I was thinking like we might, <laughs> we might have more industry before we got the, uh, the demand. Or, or rather, I should say we, we were going to have more industrial demand than we were going to have space for. But we made it over here. We can kind of build off of it to start with the, the regular zoning and then uh, build it into things like uh, farming. So so this is kind of a, a weird shift here, right? Let's let's think about, and, and keep in mind from like a small town perspective, come off the highway, four lane Main Street, right? kind of carries you through here. But then maybe it dips down at the end of this zone. Let's do that. Let's see what this looks like. What if this became a two-lane road? You know, a highway exit over here. This becomes almost like a, a, a dead zone, a no man's land. We can remind ourselves of that by planting some trees. Now you're gonna be careful with the trees because you can actually ruin uh, farmland that you'll never get back. In fact, I, I made a little bit of this, a little green over here. But that's just kind of a space saver. So imagine you have your main street, kind of cuts down to one lane each way, I should say. And you've got kind of this, you know, dead zone. And then you've got another highway exit and some farmland out this way. It's one of the best patches on the map. The other one is way up there by the uh, train tracks. And we will unlock that, but we probably won't turn that into farms as much as just bring the, the train into our map. So for right now, because I haven't really decided on what we're going to do, let's paint all this we'll just go all the way down for now it's fine 
we'll run water down here. And then we'll move in, actually, before I forget, uh, districts. Make sure it's all covered. We can tighten it up later based on where the buildings are. And industry specialization, let's say farming. Now for farming, they use a lot more water. So we have to keep an eye on that. It does increase tax income and it does require uh, fertile land, which is the, the yellow land that we're sitting on there. If you wanna be sure and go into info views and resources, that makes the colors a little bit more obvious. I think it's almost easy to mistake sometimes oil at a quick glance for farming. Right, real quick glance, they don't look that different. But this is oil and is not gonna be very good for, for growing crops on. This is gonna be just great for that. So uh, we've got just the, the standard industrial zoning and that'll create farms along there. Water-wise, let's bring this out. Let's see. Just kind of follow this road and get that all connected in from here. That works, and if we do decide to drop anything, that that will be covered. But this will help us meet some of that industrial demand with something that doesn't pollute. It's going to generate a little bit more tax revenue. We're going to need it because we have to pay for more water usage. Uh, but that's okay. It's it's help. It's uh, helping keep our city green and relatively pollution free. Ignore that. Uh... So we've got the one water pump, and we're still that far into the green for water. That's crazy to me. I think that's going to change a lot as uh, as we start having more and more farms crop up here. So we've got all that industrial demand. Uh, let's see. Let's see what power looks like over here before we... Ooh. That's actually pretty good. There was an 8 spot. Let's take that 8 spot and connect that in. I want to create these, you know... Slightly separated areas. So this might actually be really good over here, come to think of it, for um, a transport hub. We could have like the, the bus station, maybe hook up a train line. We'll get uh, trams going at some point. I think trams are going to be a really nice look for our, our kind of main street here. We'll have to find a way to kind of turn them here, though, come to think of it. because Can you do two-lane street with tram? Oh, you can. Okay, so we'll we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. But yeah, this might actually be nice instead of expanding more industry up here to do kind of a transport hub. Maybe have, uh, I don't know, university campus up there. Uh, I'll give you some of my thoughts on kind of what I was thinking of expanding in, an, in a nine square build, right? Over here to the right, I was thinking nature preserve, nature reserve. One of them goes in a jar and has fruit in it. Uh, the other one uh, is for, you know, wildlife. So we'll, we'll do that one. Um, up here, this is kind of a dead corner of the map, but maybe tucking a few things up by the highway. We can hook into the train uh, rails up there. And obviously some more highway and uh, building with inside of the mountain there. So if we look to the south, I don't want to build on the other side of the mountain. I just want that little pocket of, of land on the waterfront, really. So... I think this is going to be an interesting build, but this is kind of where we have to start planning things out and thinking about, you know, again, we don't want just one massive grid and, and grids next to grids are okay as long as they kind of fold together in weird ways. And I think that makes a lot of sense. We're trying to minimize also the, the intersections with our main road. So if you see, we go 60 units before we have an intersection that turns off of this road. This is really about carrying traffic up and down this main drag, getting them on and off the highway. But in terms of turning into residential, you can turn there, or you can turn there, or there, right? So it, we're really spacing out uh, the traffic and the potential uh, problems that they run into at intersections. Now, we do have traffic lights at all these four-lane stops, and I'm okay with that at the highway entrance and exit. If we look at info views, we have a little bit of traffic here. I think that's to be expected. We could turn this light off and let these people have the right of way. I don't know how that will do, but let's try it. Let's see. So if we stop the traffic on the T, 
right? It doesn't look like traffic is so heavy because of this light over here, probably. Um, looks like that will keep things functioning. What I normally do in these cases is, is if this is a road that is carrying traffic in and out of the zone, stop the side traffic like that. Whoops. And let people just kind of move along that road so that hopefully there's less backup on there. I'm not going to come in here and do all the intersections. I just want to kind of show you my thought there. But right away, that intersection is flowing a little bit better. Is it? Yeah. 94%, not too bad. So our traffic is what, up here? <laughs> On that little turnaround? When we get highway roads, we'll fix that and make that a little bit better. Uh, they're complaining about garbage down here. And that is, a, that is a pretty far drive. The problem with the garbage trucks, too, is that as they drive by houses, if they have garbage, they pick it up. So if you're way out in the edge of the grid, by the time the trucks, you know, turn onto this street, like that guy, he's already heading back. Because he picked up enough garbage, he has, to, he has to go back. So, think about that. Think about your routes. This guy's going to get picked up right now. Here we go. Thank you. So, demand-wise, lots and lots and lots of residential. I think we could continue to go over this way. I think that would be all right. But do we start to hook this around also? I think that we do. Because I don't want to build up into here. Let's carry this road over just a little bit. See if you can see what I'm thinking here. So we want that to kind of curve with the oil pocket, as it were. That changing color in the grass. But we could use this to kind of bring traffic down to that tip. We won't have as much built up on that side of the island, or that side of the water, I should say. The island. Um, the opposite of an island. So that, that'll help right there. And then we can kind of do what we did before, which is... What about every 60? Come down here. Is that too far? That's too far. Let's, let's come down to here. And we'll come straight off of this. We'll come down 12 units, and then let's just build a straight road to there. We've got a little bit of dead space. That's okay. So you have these areas of the town that are still very much a grid. But not... But not compared to each other, right? They start to You start to get these rhombuses in different shapes. And all kinds of trash problems. Um, do we do a second dump up here? Or do we need to move it and give them another way? Do we do another city service road kind of on what will be this highway exit? Do we bring it down this way? Say 40 units? And what's the street that runs predominantly through here? I guess they all do. Let's do this one. And let's connect it to... Since we're not going to be zoning, I don't think, right here, that doesn't really matter as much. So let's get a second dump in, because they're complaining a lot. A, a second recycling plant, I should say. And we can see where that noise and where that pollution bubble happens. And it's not where we have residents living, so that's totally fine. Not enough workers, not enough power. So let's do ourselves a favor. Let's get us all connected in a one power grid again. That should get them connected. But that's not going to solve any problems because we don't have enough power for that grid individually and for this grid. So well, apparently we do when we combine it all. Maybe there was enough left over from the uh, industrial. Area. Why are you complaining about garbage? You have a recycling plant right there. Are they... That shouldn't be an issue. Power-wise, we're in the yellow again, so... Say hello to, like, the 18th... Uh, the 18th wind turbine. That should solve our power problem. Are we finally at water usage? I bet we... Uh... Can I see somebody complaining about water over here? Oh, yeah, because you're... We didn't actually connect this. We'll do that for some redundancy. 
Redundancy. I said that I definitely said that one wrong. I felt like it didn't come out right. But that gets us a pretty good head start on expanding our city. Now, I'm going to use these a lot as, as temporary placeholders. We're going to come up with, you know, a, a couple farm properties, a couple industries that handle farming. Um, and we'll make it much more organized. Maybe we will tuck a few of these buildings in here or there. We're not going to keep, you know, just a ton of farms down this strip. Um, they might be here or there, but we'll we'll thin this out a lot. We've got to get people coming over here. Um, part of that is making room for people to move in. Why do we not do that zone? That's kind of weird. Oh, because I built that street right at the start of the episode and only zoned along it to, to make our uh, our next population milestone. We can fill these in. We'll continue to leave this block as a buffer zone. I think, should we think about, should we pause it real quick and move these power lines because they're cutting through zones at this point. Let's do that. We'll come over here, connect from the back side of this block so we don't eat up a, a real weird line of trees. I'll kind of keep it parallel to the street there. And yeah, let's just do a little bit of zoning and we'll call it a day. Um, hopefully, you know, I think this build's gonna be less about the step-by-step -step building. I've done it a lot, but I, I wanna talk more about the theory behind this and why I'm doing certain things. We're gonna keep this build very small. So uh, hopefully you saw the last episode. I'm, I'm building it or basing it off of Maybe not basing it off of inspired by Boulder, Colorado. And it, it's a really interesting city that's very spread out on the map when looking at it from above, but very short. The tallest building, I think, is 12 stories. So it has a, a very different feel. It's got, you know, the Midwest of America to the east that's very flat. Uh, and then it's sitting right on the edge of the Rocky Mountains there. I mean, there's a gigantic mountain right on the edge of the town. And it, it's just, it's a really cool look. And when I saw Lavender Lake's map, I kind of felt like, you know, that was the case, right? That, you know, kind of had these mountains cropping up out of a relatively flat building space. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to kind of try and replicate or, or reimagine some of the ideas behind Boulder um, in Lavender Lake. So I wanted to really focus on city planning today, but... You know, so sometimes I get distracted, but hopefully you have some of the ideas behind, you know, where we're going with this build. We'll talk about each area as we expand out. There's all kinds of stuff that we unlocked. So every couple episodes, we'll go back and fine tune and make sure we haven't forgotten things uh, like high school. Did we unlock high school yet? Or is that next? Yeah. Okay. So real quick. Uh, eligibility 567. We're already at our next milestone. Perfect. So this is a little too big. It's going to eat up some of those buildings on the other side of the street. So let's commit to it here. Oh, that would have been so nice. Would have been so nice if that fit. And it might have on a grid. Does it fit sideways? It doesn't. It's just too big. So you get to go with an extra space there. So we'll do this. That's the that's the Institute of Creative Arts. Same as with the regular schools. It's more expensive and it handles less students. So uh, 24,000, 560 a week, 1,000 capacity, 30,000, 720 a week, 800 capacity. So everything about green cities is more expensive so hopefully it will blend in and help. It, it uses less power and water in the process, which is where you get some of that money back, but it's by no means a, a perfect scenario. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. It, it's gonna be a little different, but I'm, I'm super excited about this build. And because I'm going at it from a kind of a different perspective, I'm gonna talk more about the process this time than step-by-step. If you enjoyed today's video, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are all greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new, consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and all those other things in the description down below. But until the next one, when we'll see what we missed and continue to build and expand, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.